In this video, I will teach you a lot of new and useful idiomatic expressions that native speakers use. You will listen to a conversation that I had with a native speaker in Los Angeles. You might remember Drake from one of my previous videos. Drake works at the Cheesecake Factory. He's a host in that restaurant. But with the situation that's going on in the world today, with the coronavirus, so many people are not working right now. They don't have jobs and it's very difficult for them. I was thinking about Drake and I was wondering how he was doing during these difficult times. We had a conversation about what's going on in his life. Drake used a lot of interesting idiomatic expressions that native speakers use every day. I would like to teach you these expressions and I believe they will make you feel more confident when you're speaking English. First, I'd like to say, I hope you're doing well. I hope you and your family and all the people you love are doing well. And I really hope that all of our lives will get back to normal really soon. Drake and I decided to meet in a public place and we practiced social distancing. We were standing six feet away from each other, exactly as we were supposed to, in a park that's near both of our houses. There were many people walking outside because it was such a beautiful day in Los Angeles. But of course, everybody was keeping a distance because of these new restrictions that we have with the coronavirus. It felt so good to be outside. It was so nice to just walk around and look at the trees and look at the nature and to not have to think about all these bad things that we're hearing on the news all the time. It was a nice break. There were many people walking with their families and one guy was meditating. First, you will watch Drake answering one of my questions. And then I will come back and I will teach you the meaning of the expressions that Drake was using. And I will give you other example sentences of those expressions so that you can practice them in different types of situations. In this clip, Drake talks about not having a job at the moment and about his financial situation. Let's listen to Drake and then I will come back. Hello again, everybody. How are you impacted by the lack of work, Drake? Well, uh, maybe about five days ago, they gave us like a one day notice at Cheesecake Factory. Uh, they let us know, hey everyone, uh, Los Angeles County is uh, shutting down all dine-in restaurant um, experience. So now we switched only to takeout orders. Let's see this guy. Check out this guy. Oh yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, that's an yeah. interesting bike. Yep, yeah, he's he's riding around. He has a <laughs> trunk on his bike. <laughs> uh, so you only get, you were only given one day notice? Yeah, they let us know um, via email in the morning. Um, when when all this first started, before we shut down the restaurants, they had us um, seating people six feet apart, or every other table. Uh, was being sat. We weren't able to sit every table in a row anymore due to social distancing. Our traffic slowed down quite a bit. We didn't see, you know, anywhere close to the numbers that we were seeing before. Um, How are you personally impacted by all this? For the last five days, I haven't had any type of work. Um, you know, uh, there's a lot of confusion right now as to what to do. A lot of companies are urging their employees to file for unemployment. Um, I know that's what Cheesecake Factory did in this time. They, they told us that we can go ahead and file for unemployment uh, and that we can use our PTO. What does PTO uh, mean? Uh, paid time off. So, okay. So basically, you know, I, I have almost 50 hours of accrued PTO and they're going to be, um, you know, if I cash that in, that's as much as I can get on that. Uh, so it just depends on how long this whole thing lasts. I can file for unemployment, um, which unemployment is going to pay, you know, I, I believe like, you know, and at, like roughly what you make uh, in a week, they'll be sending you maybe like 500 bucks or something, 400 bucks a week. Um, and That's you know, not that much. Not, not that much, no. The first expression is to give notice. And Drake said they gave us one day notice. They gave us like a one day notice at Cheesecake Factory. They gave us like a one day notice at Cheesecake Factory. And to give someone notice means to tell them in advance about something that will happen soon. For example, if you'd like to quit your job, usually it's customary to give a two week notice to your employer. So you can say, I gave my two week notice. And by the way, did you notice that I said two week 
and not two weeks notice? Do you know why? That's a common grammatical mistake that some of my students make. They might put that S at the end of weeks, but we don't put the S because notice is a noun and therefore two week functions as an adjective, as a descriptor, and we don't add an S. So we say two week notice, two hour meeting. We don't say two hours meeting for the same reason. My tutor requires a 24 hour notice for canceling our lesson. The next two expressions are dine in and take out. Let's listen to how Drake used them. Hey everyone, uh, Los Angeles County is uh, shutting down all dine-in restaurant um, experience. So now we switch only to takeout orders. To dine in is to eat at the restaurant and takeout is when you take the food home. And right now we can only have takeout. We can't dine in. We prefer to dine in, but during the virus epidemic, we'll have to order takeout. The next expression is to check out. I use that expression. Let's see this guy. Check out this guy. Oh yeah. He's... Let's see this guy. Check out this guy. Oh yeah. He's... I said, check out this guy. To check out is to look at, to observe, to notice something that's happening. You can say, check out that car or check out that beautiful sunset or simply check it out. Look at it. Let's see this guy. Check out this guy. Oh yeah. He's... The next expression is every other. Listen to how Drake used it. They had us um, seating people six feet apart or every other table uh, was being sat. They had us um, seating people six feet apart or every other table uh, was being sat. For example, if I work every other day, I work Monday, I don't work Tuesday, I work Wednesday, I don't work Thursday, and so on. Be careful, the common mistake I hear is every second. That's not correct. Don't say every second day, say every other day, every other year, and so on. I exercise every other day. They go to Hawaii every other year. Don't say every second year. Native speakers don't say that. I have a feeling that probably most of you know the next expression, in a row. We weren't able to sit every table in a row anymore due to social distancing. We weren't able to sit every table in a row anymore due to social distancing. When you do something in a row, you do it without any breaks, without stopping. They had to seat them every other seat. It wasn't every table in a row. Last week, I exercised six days in a row. I usually work five days in a row. Listen to the way that Drake used the word traffic. It's probably a different meaning than the one you're familiar with. Our traffic slowed down quite a bit. Our traffic slowed down quite a bit. When he was talking about the restaurant, he said, our traffic slowed down quite a bit. Usually we use the word traffic when we're talking about many cars on the street or on the highway. There's a lot of traffic in the city, but traffic can also be used for a busy restaurant or a busy store. You can also use traffic for a website. You can say that website gets a lot of traffic and that means a lot of people are going to that website. The next expression is to file for unemployment. Listen to the way Drake used it. A lot of companies are urging their employees to file for unemployment. A lot of companies are urging their employees to file for unemployment. When you file for unemployment, you fill out an application to let them know that you're no longer working and then you receive payment for not working. When people receive that payment, they say, I'm getting unemployment. He lost his job, so he needs to file for unemployment. His unemployment check is $500 a week. The next word is not an idiomatic expression, but it's a good word that I think you need to know, to accrue. Let's listen to the way Drake used it. I have almost 50 hours of accrued PTO, and they're gonna be, um, you know, if I cash that in, that's as much as I can get on that. To accrue means to grow or to increase over time, to accumulate, and Drake accrued 50 hours PTO, 
paid time off. You can say, I accrued five extra vacation days. If you don't pay your credit card bill on time, the late fees will accrue. The next expression is to cash in. If I cash that in, that's as much as I can get on that. If I cash that in, that's as much as I can get on that. To cash in is to receive money for something that you give. He needed money, so he cashed in his gold coins. He needed money, so he cashed in his gold coins. The next word that Drake used is roughly. Uh, an at, like roughly what you make uh, in a week. Uh, an at, like roughly what you make uh, in a week. Roughly means approximately. It takes roughly two hours to get there. Three meters is roughly 10 feet. Instead of saying dollars, it's very common to say bucks. That's a more casual way to say it. They'll be sending you maybe like 500 bucks or something. They'll be sending you maybe like 500 bucks or something. You owe me 10 bucks. How much did you pay for it? I paid 30 bucks. The next expression is not that plus an adjective. Listen to the way I said it. And that's you know, not that much. Not, not that much, no. I said that's not that much. You can also say that's not so much. It means exactly the same thing. Many people say that instead of so. For example, you can say, it's not so hot today. Or you can say, it's not that hot today. How's the weather? It's not that great. Was it painful? It wasn't that bad. Now let's watch another clip of Drake. I asked him how it feels to not have a job at the moment. Listen to his answers and then I will come back and teach you some more idioms. And what emotions are you feeling? How are you feeling? Um, to be honest with you, you know, I mean, I, I, it's an unsure time for everybody. Everyone is kind of in panic mode right now. Um, I, I think that, you know, we've never really seen anything quite like this. Pretty much everything is shut down except for essentials, um, you know, food and, and hospital and things of that nature. So, I mean, Everyone's at home. Everyone has a lot of spare time on their hands. Everyone's watching the news, you know, and, and you know, looking for what the media has to say about this thing. Me personally, um, I'm, I keep a positive mindset. I think you remember that from the last video as I'm the type of person, you know, no matter what's going on around me, you know, I want to try to see the positive in a situation or I want to try to see the light in the, at the end of that tunnel. And so this is no different. This is no exception. Listen to the way that Drake used the word mode. Everyone is kind of in panic mode right now. Everyone is kind of in panic mode right now. He said in panic mode. Mode is the condition of something, the state of something. He used it for emotions and feelings, but you probably know how we use mode for technology. You can say, please put your phone on silent mode. Drake believes it's important to not be in panic mode during this crisis, and I agree with him. Everyone is kind of in panic mode right now. The next two expressions are spare time and on their hands. Listen to how Drake used them. Everyone has a lot of spare time on their hands. Everyone has a lot of spare time on their hands. Drake said everyone has a lot of spare time on their hands. Spare means extra. You have a spare tire, the fifth tire. And when you have extra time, you have spare time. Sometimes when people ask you for money, for example, on the street, they will frequently say, do you have any spare change, any extra money that you don't need? A few coins, for example, that's called spare change. The other expression that Drake used is on their hands. Everyone has a lot of spare time on their hands. Everyone has a lot of spare time on their hands. If you have something on your hands, that means it's something that's happening in the moment for you. This is your current situation. You can say, I have a lot of spare time on my hands. You can also say, they have a very serious crisis on their hands. I like the next expression, to see the light at the end of the tunnel. Let's listen to how Drake used it. I want to try to see the light in the, at the end of that tunnel. And so this is no different. This is no exception. To see the light at the end of the tunnel is to have hope even though everything looks dark, even though everything is bad right now. I have a little hope because I see the light at the end of the tunnel. It looks like something good may happen in the future. Something good is coming. 
They have been in a financial crisis, but they finally see the light at the end of the tunnel. The virus is still spreading, but there's light at the end of the tunnel. For the next expression, I'd like to teach you the usage of no versus not. That's a pretty common question that I get. People sometimes don't understand why we can say no in some cases or not. Drake said, this is no exception. This is no exception. This is no exception. You could also say, this isn't an exception. But when you say, this is no exception, it has a little more power. It has a little more emphasis. You can say, this is not different or this is no different. It's exactly the same. This is no different. This isn't good. This is no good. For homework, I would like you to practice these expressions making your own sentences. That way you can not only remember them, but also feel comfortable using them next time you're speaking English. In the next video, we will continue with part two, the rest of my conversation with Drake, and you will learn a lot more expressions. If you would like to follow Drake on Instagram, his Instagram name is Drakey Reyes. And if you haven't subscribed to this channel yet, make sure that you do and click on the notification bell so that you can find out when I release part two of this video and the other videos that I'm planning to release soon. Thanks for watching and keep practicing your English. To learn all of the rules for a good American accent, you can buy my online video courses at accurateenglish.com. Thank you.